Hi, welcome back to Flashback Friday. Last Friday, I think, I did a, um, a video on the Pentax Super A and uh, I shared how I used to use that for weddings uh, at one stage in my career until I swapped over to the Pentax SFXN, which I've just, which was an autofocus camera, and then the Pentax MZS. But also in that talk, I talked about the the Pentax 645, which is this one here, which was the big brother of the Super A. And um, I purchased one of these many years ago, and uh, it's a wonderful camera. I've thought about selling it recently, and I've actually advertised, and then I withdrew the ad, so I'm still in two minds because it's such a, a lovely camera. It's all manual focus, but has all the automatic exposure modes that you would like, aperture priority, shutter priority, programmed, auto and manual and metering built in and uh, it's just a wonderful camera and it takes wonderful photos. Uh, the Pentax 4.5 is the 6 by 45 centimeter ratio uh, which is quite a bit bigger than 35 millimeter. Before we finish here I'll show you some photos I've taken with this camera on. Uh, I've set up one of my laptops over here as a bit of a light board and I've got some slides there I'll show you some of the results you can get with these cameras. So, um, this is the camera, it's a beautiful chunky, fairly heavy, of course these days you can now get um, uh, the Pentax 645D, which was the first digital version of this, which had some limitations, I was very tempted but it was very pricey when it came out, and then the Pentax 645Z came out to replace that, I'm not sure whether there's been a follow up one to that as well, but that's uh, also got video on that one, I think the Pentax 645D had video on that too. So if you have a digital version of this, all these old lenses I'm going to show you will fit perfectly on those cameras, but you will need to use them um, manually. There's no autofocus on these lenses. There was a couple of other versions of this came out, and uh, the Pentax 645N was the first autofocus version of this, and then I think the Pentax 645N2, and that's autofocus on there, much sought after too. They're beautiful cameras as well. And they had a few more bells and whistles than what than what this one's got. But this one, it's got a hot shoe up the top here. It's got a PC socket on the side. You've got um, settings here where you can actually do deliberate double exposures if you want to on the camera. I did that a couple of times on weddings, superimposing a scene on, on in, a, in a wedding, which worked reasonably well uh, with a um, filter holder at the front here. And uh, that was a common thing back in the 70s and 80s to do with weddings. So this camera takes six triple, uh, double A batteries that are housed in here. I was having a play with this earlier and uh, I uh, had trouble getting the thing to work until I looked up the manual. What's going on here now? This releases here somehow. There we are, we've got it out now. So there are your six AA batteries fit in that little compartment there and uh, double A ones. I'd recommend to take them out if you have the camera in disuse for some time, which I did at one stage because I took it into a camera shop once and said this camera's not working and they replaced the batteries and lo and behold it was working. So, Hi, welcome back to Flashback Friday. Last Friday I think I did a, um, a video on the Pentax Super A and uh, I shared how I used to use that for weddings uh, at one stage in my career until I swapped over to the Pentax SFXN, which I've just, which was an autofocus camera, and then the Pentax MZS. But also in that talk, I talked about the the Pentax 645, which is this one here, which was the big brother of the Super A. And um, I purchased one of these many years ago, and. Uh, it's a wonderful camera. I've thought about selling it recently and I've actually advertised and then I withdrew the ad so I'm still in two minds because it's such a, a lovely camera. It's all manual focus but has all the automatic exposure modes that you would like, aperture priority, shutter priority, programmed, auto and manual and metering built in. And uh, it's just a wonderful camera and it takes wonderful photos. Uh, the Pentax 4.5 is the 6 by 45 centimeter ratio, uh, which is quite a bit bigger than 35 millimeter. 
before we finish here I'll show you some photos I've taken with this camera on uh, I've set up one of my laptops over here as a bit of a light board and I've got some slides there I'll show you some of the results you can get with these cameras so um, this is the camera it's a beautiful chunky fairly heavy of course these days you can now get um, uh, the Pentax 645D which was the first digital version of this which had some limitations I was very tempted but it was very pricey when it came out and then the Pentax 645Z came out to replace that. I'm not sure whether there's been a follow-up one to that as well. But that's uh, also got video on that one. I think the Pentax 645D had video on that too. So if you have a digital version of this, all these old lenses I'm going to show you will fit perfectly on those cameras. But you will need to use them um, manually. There's no autofocus on these lenses. There was a couple of other versions of this came out and uh, the Pentax 645N was the first autofocus version of this and then I think the Pentax 645N2 and that's autofocus and they're much sought after too they're beautiful cameras as well and they had a few more bells and whistles than what than what this one's got but this one it's got a hot shoe up the top here it's got a PC socket on the side you've got um, settings here where you can actually do deliberate double exposures if you want to on the camera I did that a couple of times on weddings superimposing a scene on, on in, a, in a wedding which worked reasonably well uh, with a um, filter holder at the front here and uh, that was a common thing back in the 70s and 80s to do with weddings so this camera takes six triple uh, double a batteries that are housed in here I was having a play with this earlier and uh, I uh, had trouble getting the thing to work until I looked up the manual what's going on here now This releases here somehow. There we are, we've got it out now. So there are your six AA batteries fit in that little compartment there. And uh, double A ones. I'd recommend to take them out if you have the camera in disuse for some time, which I did at one stage because I took it into a camera shop once and said, this camera's not working and they replaced the batteries and lo and behold, it was working. So there you go. They make, I'll show you, I'll hopefully be able to demonstrate the noise they make. They're a bit noisy when they're far off. They're not the ideal sort of thing if you are indoors in a church or somewhere like that. Everyone hears the thing go off. It's got this motor, built-in motor drive. And um, so, so they're quite noisy when they fire off. Got a, quite a distinctive rrr sound. Anyway, I'll demonstrate that. We've got push-button operations up here, which I can't demonstrate at the moment because I haven't got it switched on with a film in it. And you've got your ISO setting here and plus or minus uh, exposure compensation the LED light different modes on off button it's all push button you've got a um, on the side here this is where you can preview your depth of field um, it's a very comprehensive professional camera so let's have a look this has got a standard lens on it at the moment which is a what's it called Called a 75 millimeter, so that's your equivalent of your 50 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter camera, and it ranges from f2.8 to f22, and it's got an a it's an A series lens like you had on the old A series lenses on 35 millimeter, which means you can set it fully on if you put that on A on auto and you pro program auto up here, everything you take will be automatic, but then you can change it to shutter priority or aperture priority or ma metered manual. So. It's a beautiful lens, uh, very smooth, and you've got your split image in the middle there. Whoops, I should stand down here. See if I can get that in focus. Now I've got the two edges coming together in a straight line, and now I'm perfectly in focus. And if I had a film in it, I could take take the photo. So that's that that lens. Then we have um, so to to get to, to get that off. We just have a little button here and we press that in a bit like the release on on most uh, cameras lens comes off it's a bayonet type mount and then we put another one on so this one here is a forty five millimeter which is a probably the equivalent of the twenty eight millimeter or thirty five millimeter in um, 
in 35 millimeter terms so this gives you the wider angle of view a little bit bigger for the wide angle view I can look through that now and now I can certainly see the wide angle kicking in there I've got a lot more in my viewfinder now with that so once again manual focus it's a very nice lens it has a um, 67 millimeter filter on the front so we'll take that one off that one over there and this one here is a, um, a, a medium telephoto this is a 150 millimeter lens it's got a little built-in hang on I'll put this camera down for a second a little built-in lens hood there which gives you stops the the lens flare when you're using these so it's a nice little camera they're all very chunky and solid metal lenses so you put this one on and show you what this one looks like there you are there's your little telephoto lens so that's probably about the equivalent of 135 millimeter on the or 85 millimeter on the um I'm not sure I should look it up. You should, you should better look it up and Google it anyway. But it gives you a little bit of a mid-range uh, telephoto, ideal for portraits, in fact. So that's that one. When I first bought this camera from a guy, I'm the third owner of this camera, and I, I still occasionally see the original owner of it because he works in retail in a camera shop and has been for many years. And then I bought it off the fellow that he, uh, uh, he sold it to and uh, I've had it ever since and uh, it's been a wonderful purchase so now this one here I was only looking up yesterday I bought this second hand some as a used lens some years back now and I actually paid $1300 for it so it's quite pricey I don't know what they cost now but this is a fully manual uh, 80 to 160 zoom lens and it's a very nice you can just you probably can't it's just so very smooth zooms in and out focus I think the focusing and the the focusing and the zoom are all the same oh no hang on the focus is back here that's your focus that this one back here is your focus and that's your zoom I think that's how it works Oh no, the back one, sorry, the back one here is zooming it in and out, and this one here is focusing. So I'll put that on, and I'll show you what that looks like on the camera. Haven't used this for a while. Very nice, big, it's quite an outfit when you do this, and uh, I have taken this into the Flinders Ranges in South Australia and taken some shots with it, and they come out quite nice. And uh, you look at the reviews, uh, there's some quite good reviews on this camera and of course with the autofocus medium format pentaxes you can get an autofocus focus version of all these cameras but they're very expensive and uh, of all these lenses I mean so there you are that's that one that's the big one now when I first bought this I started to say before when I first bought this outfit the lad was offering it to me with those three prime lenses plus he had a 300 millimeter telephoto lens he was asking 2500 for the basic outfit with the three lenses and 2500 for the 300 millimeter lens so i opted to say no you can keep that and i'll just buy the rest of it i often regretted not buying the 300 millimeter but basically um, these other lenses do everything i want them to do so there you go now one of the advantages of these this modern age is that um, you can actually now get adapters in fact, I had an adapter, and I still do have an adapter. I have a Pentax 6x7, and I have an adapter for this camera too, which I means I can put all my Pentax 6x7 lenses, which is the medium format step up from 6x4.5, on this camera. And uh, use those lenses, which are nice, big, chunky lenses, and put them on there. I've only got a couple, but they're really nice lenses. I think I've got, yeah, two or three, I'm not sure. Anyway... In this modern age you can get adapters for just about any lens to go on just about any camera and the beauty of this particular uh, system is that I have these uh, lenses for instance if I've got this medium telephoto lens here 
this one here which I was showing you before with the built-in lens hood I can actually put this on here somewhere this adapter on it which I bought which wasn't all that expensive I bought it online from overseas I've got to line this up hang on where's the red line there it is there's the red dot okay so we line it up now it's secure on there you see so that adapter and that adapter now fits a um, digital SLR or a 35 millimeter SLR so without further ado I think I've got a digital SLR here somewhere okay Pentax ones I mean this is designed for the Pentax so this is the Pentax KR I've got a nice little 50 millimeter autofocus standard lens on there put that over there now you can actually now put this on my digital SLR once again I've got to line up the dots there's the red dot there's a the red dot oops days not very good at doing this holding it up in the air so now I have my Pentax 645 lens on my Pentax KR digital SLR and I you've got to use it in manual though I think that's how it works you'd have to read the um, instructions on again let me just have a look and see see what happens maybe I'll try it on auto don't know that that'll make any difference yes I've got a picture out of that so you do it's all manual focus of course but I can use that on my digital SLR and also and all those lenses that I've showed you they can all fit on here and not only that, with the adapter that I have where I can fit a um, 645, sorry, a 6x7 Pentax lens on my medium format, if I use the two adapters that I have, I can actually fit the big Pentax 6x7 lenses on a digital SLR or on a 35mm SLR film camera. So there you go. That's pretty good. What else can I tell you? I guess the... Um, you have these little canisters on the back or cartridges on the back it's not like some medium format cameras you actually take out a dark slide and just um, change the films with the dark slide but these you have to take out the whole cartridge you can't can't take out a, a cartridge mid-roll and then put it back again like you can with other types of medium format cameras so you have these um, things here I'll just put this up here somewhere hopefully you don't knock them camera over <clears throat> so you have these um, cartridges that comes out there like that that's actually got a film loaded in it ready to go and uh, this is what they look like you just put it in and wind it through until you come to this start line there which you line up line that up with the red dot arrow down the bottom you thread it onto this other side first and then you put it in, twist it shut, and then the camera should wind the uh, the lens on. So we're just going to try that and see. I put some new batteries in this before, and we'll just see if we can demonstrate that. So we'll just come up here. This one in here hasn't got anything in it, so we take that one out. So if you are doing a wedding shoot or something like that, you have these preloaded up with film and an assistant to help you reload them as you go because you only get 15 shots to the reel on on 120 millimeter film you can also get a um, a 220 millimeter one of these cartridges as well which enables you to get 30 shots to the roll see that's a 220 um, cartridge load whereas these other ones are 120 the 220 ones are probably a bit hard to get hold of these days so having said that where was I up to <coughs> excuse me 15 shots to the roll uh, normally on a 120 roll of film so we'll put this in this is preloaded just come into the back here somehow put that in there like that should just snap in we've got this little gadget here whoops hang on a second move around turn it clockwise and then just lock it like that turn it on now if I press this button 
here goes nothing. Hopefully it'll wind it on to the first shot at the moment. We'll see what happens. Hear it? And now it's stopped. So we're now showing number one exposure. Somewhere over here somewhere. Might be able to see number one exposure just down there in the bottom there. So that's wound forward, you see. So I'm ready to take a photo. So I could, um, I'll take a photo. I've got film in it, but I'll waste this shot just to let you hear what the noise sounds like when we uh, go through this. Okay, so you're listening for the noise. This is what it like, what it sounds like. You hear that? It was a bit of a, a delay then, wasn't it? Let me try it again. Probably because it had it on a very slow shutter speed. Let's put it on. We'll put it on manual. Change the mode. Oh. Yeah, we had it on we had it on a f32 no wonder it was taking such a long time for that shot to go through so we have put it back here on manual I've got it on manual at 125th of a second at f4.5 we'll see what this sounds like and see if this works okay let's have a look fairly close focusing this lens actually I'm getting a bit of a focus there so here we go. Listen for the noise again. So did you hear that? I'll do it one more time. I'm wasting film. This is old film anyway, but I'm just give, doing this to, to demonstrate the noise. So that's what you deal with when you are using this. So it's not the sort of place where these days you can get digital cameras that will give you no noise at all when you press the shutter. These were noticeable when, when you're in a church, but most other times no one would worry about it. So there you go, that's the Pentax 645 system. Um, there's probably obviously better demonstrations of these on the internet than what I've done. I'm, this is all totally unrehearsed, I'm just um, speaking off the top of my head. Not much on the top of my head, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I'll just try and show you just now, I, I set up before, I set up on the... I've got a very small light table but I set up on on uh, this uh, laptop here. I just put a white screen on my laptop and turned it halfway upside down. So what okay, picking up where we left off. These are some um, medium format 645 transparencies. Some of these were probably shot on Velvia, I think, uh, some time ago uh, at ISO 100. And um, I'll just zoom in on each one. Whenever you put medium format transparencies on a light box they look beautiful so there you are that's up on the Murray River this one here this one over here was when the um, replica of the buffalo was first put down at Glenelg South Australia which I don't think is I think it's gone now it fell into disrepair taking it away but that was a beautiful boat and had a restaurant there a museum this is up on the Murray River again, one of my favourite places. You can see a houseboat going down the middle of the river there. And then you've got um, some other foliage there. Beautiful saturated shots. I think those plants have been watered. And uh, you can see the, the colour and the detail. You probably can't tell on here. but um, And the colour there, that's beautiful red flowering gum there. So there you go. Okay, so that's just about a wrap up wrap up of the Pentax 6545 there are a couple of other things I didn't point out um, one of them is that you do actually have the option on here of shooting single shots one at a time or continuous shots um, I think yeah I'm not sure how many it does it doesn't do very too very many shots per second and you with obviously with only 15 rolls to the shot you wouldn't um, 15 shots to the roll you wouldn't want to be doing that very often but you can shoot continuously on there so that's single or, or continuous. Um, there was one other thing. You do have a PC socket here. No, nope, I can't think of what the other thing was. If I, I'll write it in the notes if I can find out what it was that I was going to share with you as well. Something else about these cameras. But there you go. Oh, I know what it was. The uh, up here also you have a um, a diopter adjustment. I've lost the the, the um, the little lens cup, eye cup has gone off of this, but you can actually adjust this 
like you can on a lot of cameras, decent cameras, you can adjust this, particularly if you wear glasses, to your own eyesight, that little diopter adjustment there. So, there you go. Now I've got to try and work out how to put those segments together now. So hopefully we'll have a go. If I can't do it, I'm not very good at all this editing. I should really teach myself how to do it properly. But um, if I don't, if I can't put it all together in one hit, I'll just have to say Pentax 6451123. Three. three different segments or even four. I don't know how many I've done now. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to comment on the uh, YouTube channel, please do so. Uh, or on whatever blog this happens to end up on. Probably Jeff Thompson Photographics on my blog. It might end up on there. So thanks for watching and uh, look forward to talking to you again.